This episode of The Bald and the Beautiful is sponsored by Green Chef. As a modern single woman, it's hard to eat healthy at home. Half of the produce I buy from the store goes bad before I can finish it, and every time I order dinner from a food delivery app, the neighborhood coyotes maul the driver before they reach my doorstep. So here's the solution. It's Green Chef. It's the number one meal kit for eating clean with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. That's right, honey. Get ahead of the busy season with their convenient step-by-step recipes, including dinners ready in 25 minutes or less, 10-minute lunches, grab-and-go lunches, and green bundles featuring clean snacks and functional beverages. Plus, cut down on meal prep with pre-portioned and prepped ingredients, including pre-measured sauces, spices, and dressings delivered right to your door. I recently tried Green Chef's Egyptian-style chicken and rice and was blown away by how easy it was to prepare such a scrumptious dinner. So what's stopping you from making easy, clean cuisine in your kitchen? Go to greenchef.com slash 60bald and use code 60bald to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash 60bald and use code 60bald to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. I'm working on a show right now and we had to take a PowerPoint about... Two hours. Well, we had to take a two-hour PowerPoint about... Um, Sexual harassment. Harassment in general. Oh, okay. Harassment in general. Things Inappropriate like, conduct. Things things I never thought about, actually. I thought it was going to be mostly like, touching here is bad. You know what I mean? I thought it was going to be really like... Stay clear of these zones. Yeah, because like when I worked at the mall and stuff and I had to do like Macy's corporate training, it would be like a VHS and then it would be like someone being like... Is that real? I've seen the, I've yeah. seen that in the movies. Maybe like never a done. fake Macy's counter and some fake employees like, hi, yeah. Debbie, how's your weekend? And then like, like, you know, they start talking about. Great, Gwen. But only thing that happened is I got groped at work. Oh, no. Yeah. Or it'd be scenarios like, oh, look, Greg just got here with his earring. It would be like, <laughs> and then it would freeze and be like, where did he go wrong? Like, you know. Where did he go wrong? Is yeah. it the size of the earring or that the fact that he's a fag is that the wrong? Maybe. <laughs> Well, we had to participate in some types of scenarios. You know, part of these trainings is um, oh, examples, right? Okay. So it's like, oh, Robert tells an, an, a sex joke in front of a group of men. Okay. Is this better or worse than in front of a group of women? Plot twist, it's not. It's inappropriate, period. It's inappropriate, period, because you're at work. Yeah. But it was. it's designed to see, to show you that the line is so blurry that people have right. different answers to that. Some people do right. feel... It's bad across it's the board. Question. Some people do feel it's worse in front of women. It's kind of a trick question, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, especially since a lot of this harassment training is gendered and yes. we're a little past that in most You think so? In entertainment, especially. Like Oh yeah. You know, like Psh. Psh. What? Tracy can't slap my ass when I get her coffee anymore. Totally. Right? No. But I don't feel bad for people, but it is this impassable like bank embankment where it's like Is you're, it you're afraid if you if you're like really straight but empathetic? You're afraid to ask someone's gender, but you're afraid of getting it wrong. So I do think even though it's corny, these yeah. conversations and these training videos and stuff, they obviously have a purpose. I love it when the people say they're afraid. You should be, bitch. You should be terrified. Because welcome to our lives. Well, I get you know asked, what I mean? Like I, terrified to leave the house every day because you're gay? Yeah. Mama, get on that level. Well, I get asked crazy. my gender a lot. <laughs> out of drag. Do you really? <laughs> no, um, I get asked my gender a lot in drag on like real corporate, like a commercial for a yes, brand. Yes. Or like what a- What pronouns do you prefer? Yes. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I do feel like the presence of me in drag makes everyone like- <sighs> Well, because they don't they know. they don't want to get in trouble. And they don't know because you you will answer glibly or flippantly yeah. and make a joke out of it, which they don't know how to handle. They can't. They're like, I'm, <laughs> like my name's Scott. It's he, him. And what is your gender? Like, and they go, what does it look like? Yeah. Well, and then you sh- you pull up your skirt and show them your fucking huge gaping gash. Yeah, which like, is sexual harassment. Right. <laughs> and yeah. What does it look like, Scott? He's like, well, you you look like a girl. I'm like, oh, I don't know what a girl looks like, Scott. Yeah. What does yeah. a woman? I don't know. Look what does a girl feel like? Maybe you should fuck me, Scott. Why don't you yeah. stick your dick in my? <laughs> Scott, I can't tell if a woman until you crawl up on top of me and fuck me with that big cock, Scott. Scott, could you put that big cock in my ass and let me know I'm a woman, Scott? <laughs> I thought you would we'll have a clear picture, Scott. You know, Scott, you can make a woman out of me this afternoon over lunch, Scott. Trixie Mattel, LLC. With that big, would huge, never... oily dong. And it... <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's just being in these, like, very, let's say, <sighs> lame. Wait, when do we get accused of sexual harassment? Because that's one thing I've started to think about. It's a hard... Mary, no. in drag, my instinct is to walk into a room full of camera people and light people <laughs> and say something like, well, who's here to fuck me? But like, you can't do that. Even though my instinct is to just try to get everyone to laugh. You know what I, I mean? think you can, though, because I think 
Well, they did talk about something they talked about that's interesting. And I'm sharing this not even as a joke because I did find some. Scott. Jane. Jane. Jane, go Jane, back. Don't, Jane, you, nobody's don't use gonna that, Jane. <laughs> Scott, I'm still waiting for you to slide that oily cock down my throat. Scott, my pronouns are guzzler and cum and cum guzzler, Scott. Ah, By the way, shut some, up. Some, whenever oh, we, shut up. Whenever shut we choose mouth, a woman's name, whenever we choose someone's name, okay. I think of that listener. Someone yeah. named Scott oh, yeah, on the freeway yeah, right now. Yeah, like, he's gonna be cracking up. Yeah. Yeah, or some let's oh. say your name's Scott and you're listening to this on an edible and you're, you're like, like <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. I'm not making a joke out of it other than in drag by nature, our job is to show up and cross lines. Cross lines and be so, crazy. Yeah. 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 But I do want to be, of course, sensitive. But they did talk about <sighs> I, they said, what about, let's say, one of, they did, well, I don't know. I I don't want to tell what we talked about because it feels Why? like, well, it was an interesting training is and I don't like think sharing things classified? I learned is bad. No. no, but somebody was like, what if it's kind of in your job description to talk about, you know, what if you are a script supervisor on Law and Order SVU? Okay. And by nature, you guys are talking about a murder or, or a sex so, crime. Sexual or, assault, yeah. Then they were like, well, there are certain jobs where, let's say you're a dancer and okay. it's a sexy number. And on camera, on stage, okay. it's implied that you are to touch. And, right, right, right. But that doesn't mean when you walk off stage, right. the person who just touched you is allowed to touch you. Intimacy coaching. Intimacy yeah. coaching. And I do they think lines like that, that are interesting because for most of us, we never really have to think about it. We just, we just. We Mary, have, never. Never. Jacques Cabaret. Yeah. You think we had sexual harassment training? I know you didn't. No, we had, if any because training, we, we were training ourselves to be harassers. Yeah. You know, because we'd go out assault the um the bachelorettes and have them assault and they us want, they're waiting for it they're you waiting to assault table and they're us like, yeah they're sticking their hands up my up my skirt it's crazy they and want gross. you to be like oh this Touching guy you're getting boobs. married to does he have a huge cock yeah. that's literally what they're waiting for or they're it's waiting crazy. for you to be like oh good thing you found someone to marry you even though you're flat chested you <laughs> ugly cunt like yeah you unfuckable whore nobody would ever marry you anyways yeah Fina spit on someone I know, but she got but she got fired for that. Yeah, that's that was a crossing a line. Yeah, I don't like the touching. I don't think we should touch each other no, at no, work. No, no, no. no well, touching at work. Yes, no, we shouldn't. Right. I but just, what if you're a massage therapist? It was therapist? interesting to think like if it's in your job description to go on camera and be zany or be sexy, like you still should be careful on camera. But you know, it just made me hyper yeah. aware of like, you know, if a sound guy, if I'm a drag and a sound guy comes to mic me, he's so scared to touch me I because know. he doesn't know what's real or what's not real. I know. So then I go like. Just touch whatever you want. It's all fake. And then I know even that's like I've so I've I that is a really good. I've learned over the years to just to don't do any jokes. Don't do any jokes. Don't do any jokes with the sound guy because a they probably don't want to fuck you. I know they don't want to fuck me, especially when they put their hand inside my swamp ass. Yeah. And they're like, why did I do this? Why am I here? Who is this creature? But my you know instinct I mean? is to like make it less uncomfortable by making a joke. Right. Or like, you know, I think that would that might make a lot of people more uncomfortable. Right. Because I asked, um, I asked a sound guy if they, who's like, every sound guy, I'm like, have you touched Julia Roberts? Have you put a mic on her? And they always say no. But one guy did Oprah and he would, she would only do her own microphone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. She wouldn't let anybody touch her like that. It's interesting. Well, was something else they talked about the training, which was actually valuable was like, well, what happens if someone does get offended or there is a transgression or there is, let's say, um, a microaggression, you, you, you wrongly, um, guesstimate the boundaries with someone. Yeah. What is, how do you the next day at work resolve it? What do you say? What you do know? you do? Well, stuff like, hey, I know yesterday was uncomfortable and I want to assure you that was not my intention. To the person. And if you would give me the permission to talk about it further, it would help me know exactly what that line is. You give the person the permission. You don't force them to talk to you about it because okay. you're uncomfortable. So you ask them if it's okay. Is it okay if I pull out my big cock so we can t talk about how long it yeah. actually is? Scott, <laughs> yesterday when you called me a cum guzzler, you also forgot to mention that I was a load receptacle from behind Scott. And Scott, <laughs> I don't appreciate my back hole being completely overlooked. <laughs> my mouth is just like my ass, Scott. I would say I clean one more than the other. You can decide, Scott. <laughs> Um, you know, poor Scott. <laughs> poor Scott. But something Who's else they talked about. their kid Scott? A lot of people, uh, white people. <laughs> there was a lot of people who um. Oh my God. There was an interesting. It, there was a interesting right. um interesting Fuck. example. Okay. They said, let's say it's at work, and you have a um a coworker who is of Mexican descent. Okay. And they do a Mexican accent sometimes when uh, they're telling a joke. Right. And. Maybe their defense is, oh, girl, I'm Mexican. I'm just doing my grandma's voice. Like, that's my... But what no, they said interesting was that person 
doesn't speak for every other person's feelings about that. Thank you very much. Like if I'm gay and I use the word fag, no. it doesn't mean everyone in the room is comfortable with tea, that word. Tea. And it, I, I'm not saying it psyched me out, but it really made me think you and I have such a weird job to know where those lines are sometimes. Well, yes. And we also have two important safety nets. Number one, the editing bay. Of course. <laughs> And um, number two, the love and affection of a crowd, of a of an audience who will give us the benefit of the doubt. The benefit yes. of the doubt, yes, because they know we're not ever maliciously or like we don't ever set out to like hate something or somebody. Totally. Do I you mean, know what I mean? Yes. Ever. When I'm DJing and I get on the microphone yeah. and go, let me hear if, if you guys have wet pussies tonight. <laughs> and it, that's a metaphor, right? <laughs> yeah. How many of you have hard <laughs> dripping cocks tonight? Like, how many of you have a little bit of both? You know, like, I'm Who just... Who had a full sex change? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, it's <laughs> it's our job to deliver on that front and yeah. be zany and wild and sexy, especially yeah. in a world where queer sexuality is hushed and and, and, well, yeah. and, and, and muffled. Yeah. And I know it's my job as a drag queen to, to, to give you that moment where you see queer sexuality screamed into a microphone. Into a megaphone, into a microphone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To offset the rest of the 23 hours a day when you're in straight spaces where it's like... Well, it's, yeah, you know. don't end, don't let them know you're gay. They might burn you at the stake. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm not saying I learned a lot, um, well, but, I, but it made me think a lot about unique scenarios. I mean, I've, that's I do. I constantly struggle with that because I find I'm more entertaining off camera than I am on. We all think so. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Which is a very convenient uh, opinion to have of yesterday yourself. I was at your house off camera. Uh -huh. Was it yesterday? No. Two days ago. You were there at my house yesterday. We hung out two days yesterday. No, it was the day before Monday. Yeah, Monday. No, Tuesday. Tuesday? Saturday. It was Saturday. It was Saturday. Well, who would do it? <laughs> and you were you were doing kind of a George Carlin like sort of you know, Radio City, you know, <laughs> one mic, night only. With the mic stands. Yeah, you were doing yeah, yeah. Bo Burnham inside, <laughs> top to bottom, and I was yeah. like, God, she is. Funny. She's killing it. She's yeah. killing it. Yeah, maybe she should bring this energy to the you know the crowds that we go to. Did yeah. you get some resolution on that subwoofer cord? Uh, subwoofer cord. What's you had that cord? speaker and you hate that black cord. I put it on the other shelf, the black shelf, it blends right in. <laughs> and that's definition of gooning. Oh, uh, well, it was what's gooning for the ears? It's body euphoria for the home because I was, what, it's gender euphoria for the home. It's like the surround sound, and I mentioned it to somebody I'm casually talking to, and they're like, Ooh, bragging. I was like, it, Not bragging, it's not that expensive. Casually talking to like sexy, yeah. And it's like he thought it was like a brag. Are you pursuing a romance? No, sex. Yeah, whatever. So it was like, careful. Dune, what? Don't get wrapped up. Don't get swept <laughs> up. Don't get swept away. Like, um, Teresa. Oh my God, this face, this face. Don't get swept up. You I need that, to, hold, you hold that, on. You give that I'm heart pulling, away. You I'm, better be sure that you know you can take it back on your own I'm terms. I'm pulling the cord and ejecting out of this moment to, to, to present you with your birthday gifts. This episode of The Bald and the Beautiful is sponsored by Green Chef. As a modern single woman, it's hard to eat healthy at home. Half of the produce I buy from the store goes bad before I can finish it, and every time I order dinner from a food delivery app, the neighborhood coyotes maul the driver before they reach my doorstep. So here's the solution. It's Green Chef. It's the number one meal kit for eating clean with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. That's right, honey. Get ahead of the busy season with their convenient step-by-step -step recipes, including dinners ready in 25 minutes or less, 10-minute lunches, grab-and-go lunches, and green bundles featuring clean snacks and functional beverages. Plus, cut down on meal prep with pre-portioned and prepped ingredients, including pre-measured sauces, spices, and dressings delivered right to your door. I recently tried Green Chef's Egyptian-style chicken and rice and was blown away by how easy it was to prepare such a scrumptious dinner. Feel your best with delicious, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring clean ingredients with no artificial colors, sweeteners, high fructose corn syrup, and limited added sugar and limited processed ingredients. Choose from recipes featuring lean proteins, certified organic whole fruits and vegetables, organic cage-free eggs, and plenty of whole grain options. And Green Chef is the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Plus, nearly all packaging materials are curbside recyclable in most areas in the U.S. So what's stopping you from making easy, clean cuisine in your kitchen? Go to greenchef.com 60bald and use code 60bald to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com 60bald and use code 60bald to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Oh, can wait, can we do something else first? Yes, yeah. <laughs> we got an award. 
We got an award? For real? Is it, wait, this is just for me? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry, I thought this was both. I thought it was Bofa. What is it? Is it 2023 Slinky? People's Voice Award winner? Uh, oh, wait. Let me, let me present you with it. <laughs> they get a sham wow to clean it. Thank God. Okay, so. I thought it was for both of us. I'm sorry. It's not, no, it's for. Okay. And now, the 2023 People's Voice Award winner for general fashion, beauty, and lifestyle videos is. Trixie Mattel transforms into Dr. Manhattan. I won an award for my Dr. Manhattan yeah. video. Not for your drag. Not for, the for your drag. For the time I painted myself blue. Not for the drag. So she won an award. I think they're trying to say, Mama, hang get it up. Hang yeah, it up, it's girl. like every year when my mom gives me makeup wipes for Christmas. We know what the messaging is. Are Take this shit off, faggot. Stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you clean up your face, faggot? Scott. Scott. <laughs> why don't you wipe your face off before you come fuck me, Scott? Scott. Why, don't, why use a cum rake, Scott, when my hole's right here? I just push it out. Shut and up. you can use my prolapse as a Shut sham okay. while, Scott. That's the line. That's the line. But these people up That's the line. I have something for you oh. before my oh. birthday. What, what is it? What is it? I, it was an impulse purchase. Is it a wig? It's kind of a wig. Is it that? Is it that? Oh, it's a big... Oh, my God. It's kind of a wig. I am so I'm I'm so horny for this. We'll get Hold into on. It. Hold on one second. I'll I'll brief people. Targeted ads make me laugh, and this one was fucking funny to me, and I thought you needed it. In the meantime, we have Bald and the Beautiful Live coming all over the United States. We did just reschedule two of them. That was my bad. Um, but we have so many coming up. It's so fun live, and we've actually been doing them off like microphone, like not recording. So when you come to the live one, you will get stories and stuff that we never talk about to everyone else. So your ticket price is really like special to you, your private episode. Cause I think at the beginning we were thinking of releasing them all, but sometimes now when we tour, we're like, let's just let this be for the girls, me, you, her, that person, you know, what's the prognosis. By the way, I, I have been, um, having some physical developments and I appreciate everybody being so nice about it. But don't say it in a way of how how horrible I used to look. Okay. We can talk about me building up my gun show or whatever, and we, we don't have to say, I can't believe that it's you and I'm not throwing up. We don't have to say, Are <laughs> 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 you? <laughs> so sorry I'm late. I just, uh, I got a Brazilian blowout and it took forever. Why and then they fucked so up the bangs, so I put on a hat. Why is that so much worse than a wig? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what you're I talking about. I thought this was your color. It's a little brassy, I guess, but... Brassy? Are you kidding me? This is perfect swamp water blonde. You think? It's 24A, probably, or I, B. It gives um, good burger. It gives bad burger. <laughs> <laughs> a horrible burger. Um, oh, I, and the synthetic hair on my uh, sweaty neck feels delightful. <laughs> oh, look at, my, look at my arm in the Oh, yeah, so video. Um, to that point... I want to. I want to uh, reinforce that you don't need to compliment someone by, by like, illuminating the fact that you clearly think they look like trash before. Right. Or this person. This person is in the best shape of their life. You don't have to say. Yeah. Like. Why well, am I attracted? Yeah. You. Like. Not me being attracted to that fucking yeah. goblin over not sixty. This. Yeah. 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 I must be Scott. Yeah. Like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Am I a cum guzzling front and back hole like uh, receptacle taker? Yeah. Maybe we've been beautiful and you guys have been shallow. Yeah, or maybe you've been sleep. Maybe, so. but I have. Um, oh, I have your been. Gifts. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I would love, well, first of I'm, all, thank I thought you. that was our thing. I'm sorry. That was humiliating. I'm sorry. That was humiliating. And I you know love I've never won an you. award. No, never. I know. This almost makes up for it. That's so crazy. Basically, I think they take baseball caps and sew tracks to it. That's what it is, which is really crazy. Oh, you are too much. Oh, you are too much. Oh God, my birthday is this week. Thank so, you. It's on Wednesday. It is. And I think I'm, I'm going on a date that night, so I'm not doing anything if you're doing anything. I'm so, not. Okay, I, good. <laughs> Dave and I are going to Chicago for a family thing. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, well, I'm filming during the day, but I like working on my birthday. Me too. I'd Easy. rather be in drag filming on my doing birthday, something. honestly. Doing something. Keep your oh, hands I'm busy. Oh, I'm going to love this. You will. I. You will honestly love this. Okay, this is Make Your Body Your Machine Home 2 System. TRX. Oh, Not shit. sponsored. I very, gotta hang this very from the wall, expensive. Huh? You can mount it. You can also take it on the road and use it from a door. Seriously. Oh my God. And, and it sounds like, oh wow, but it, it really is fantastic. Thank There's a you lot of so stuff you can much, do with it. I, I like resistance bands. No, no, but this is not that. No, I know, but yeah. the stretchy shit is not my favorite. Yeah. I think I might really like this. You will. Yeah. Because you, you can so use your much. whole body and like it's fa it's fabulous. Yeah. I love personal development. Great. So then I got you another thing. It's very heavy and it's like so. 
it's such a burden, but it's like, it's a, I guess I could tell the kids at home. That was a piece of exercise equipment that I just received. I just, you know, this feels heavy. Yeah. It's just, I don't know why I got it for you. Well, that's, it's, that it's, makes me feel great. <laughs> Perhaps it was a it was, gesture of friendship and love. It was a while ago too, and that had it wrapped there, so it's double wrapped. Double bag that condom, Scott. Scott, Scott put two oh. condoms. It's a pretty book. Birds. I'm quite fond of birds. birds. That, it's birds. Every page of that book. Oh, love that. Every page of that book. Birds. Wow. No, no, don't do it. I just want to look inside. Okay. I just want to see what the vibe is. It's like ASMR, except if it sounds terrible. If you're driving, I'm sorry. That's just <laughs> yeah, a sound. I, I forget this is a podcast. Honestly. Yeah, I forget that like most people are not watching ever. us. Like, yeah. oh. But there's cameras here. So yeah, like, what yeah. am I supposed to feel? I love this. On the front, there's a beautiful red cardinal. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to love this. It's pretty. It's pretty. Birds of the tea. I'm sorry. They oh. are just life. They are nature's mystery. I have to take this wig off. This kill me. Hold on one second. <laughs> wow. Two cans. Oh my God, ostriches, eagles, hawks, goslings, owls, penguins. Um, Love that. It's like a coffee table book. Obviously, you're not going to carry that in your pocketbook. Yes, right. it's it's really amazing and I really appreciate okay. you. And then there's a, this is just a stupid fucking candle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But look at the wrapping job. I did it myself this I morning. I know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the best you could. It's the best but you could. But it's probably for the studio. Because yeah. It's here, because so it's, it's kind of more a gift, a, a gift like a work the, gift. Yeah, a work gift. An appropriate work gift. See, this is what what would have been inappropriate is um a flashlight. A flashlight. Yeah. Um, a, a dong. A fucking machine. A dong. You know, <laughs> like just a, a dong. A jelly dong. Yeah, a fucking machine. <laughs> what if you presented me with a fucking like five hundred dollar fucking machine oh my God. with a big metal <laughs> wait, fucking wait, cock on wait, it? Wait, wait, wait. Could you date someone who, like, they had to get fucked by a fucking machine at least once a week? Oh my if God. I if I was really into them, yeah. I mean, I mean, that, what does that have to do with me? It's like, if you want to do that, can I? I can be in the room. I can be doing other things. No, you have to be wearing a cheerleader outfit and cheering them on from the sidelines because it's no. happening in a football then no. field. <laughs> then no. Okay. I'm very sex toy positive. Okay. I love all types of toys and gadgets. You do. Yeah, love it. Like, what's your favorite one? Without getting too personal, of course. Love anything like anything you put your dick in for fun. Okay, flashlights, yeah. sleeves, things like yeah, of that. Yeah, love nature. anything that vibrates, anything okay. like that. I'm, I'm I'm always for that. Anything, like, stick your cock in the Dyson. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, like anything. Were you the kind of kid that put your dick in the vacuum cleaner? I didn't put my dick in the vacuum cleaner. I no, I didn't put my dick in the vacuum okay. cleaner. But I, I like stuff. I like objects. I like hardware. Okay, like uh, items. Yeah. Although I don't love some of the the grates. I don't love poppers. I don't, I don't love cock rings. Me neither. I those I don't know what is something about them because it disrupts like the 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 picture of the genitals. Yeah. Like, I like mm. solo porn in a lot and part of why I like solo porn a lot is cuz I like people f on their own fucking toys in their free time. I think oh. that's fun. It's a victimless crime. It's a victimless crime you know? unless they're chained to a radiator in Romania. Veluspa, you love them. I can't this get has been in your them. house for months. Yeah. And I keep going I like this and you go yeah it's for you for your birthday yeah. I'm going to give it to you I later. I taped it but I didn't burn it. Could that you imagine if, nice. I, if I gave you a like, half-burned candle? Like I That could. would be very me. <laughs> I could. Got to get into this. I watched a TikTok the other day because uh, I have a bunch of candles right now that are all burning down. Give like, them to me. Well, I love this brand, uh, Boy Smells. Oh, yeah. This, what, what's the, what's up with the name of that, that uh, company, though? I can't vouch for the name. What I can vouch for is the quality of the scent. Like, what does that the mean, quality Boy of the jar. Smells? I don't know. You think it's like men's groin. It's not those. It's not, it's not male smells. What are smells. they? They're like pine. I think it smells made by a boy. I think the owner's a man. I don't know. What's this gender got to do with? Anyways, go I ahead. don't know. I, how do you gender a candle? I don't know. Well, you make it like pink. Pussy hall. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think that fucking Gwyneth Paltrow pussy candle smells like? Honestly. <sighs> the crust cut off toast. <laughs> the crust cut off a peanut butter and jelly. Yeast. White bread. With, Sourdough. With something that rises. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It probably smells like a um, like Lake Michigan on a Thursday afternoon. I love gifts. I love the way that looks. That's important. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the candle jar itself. Why don't we keep it in here? That's what I'm saying. We can burn it in yeah, here. Yeah. We're running out of shelf right space. Here. By the way, what do you guys think of the studio? It's really been uh, uh, it. developing, huh? Oh, look, two. I mean, really been developing. We have a lot of awards. You know, we have a lot going on. A lot, a lot of going stuff on. going on. Um, the rain. The rain. So my house has my, my, my water damage. Yeah. You did. In the guest house and the house. I have to fix. I have to fix all of it. Did and all you, the horses get wet yeah. too? But you know, 
lately I have felt, and I don't want to be a, I, I know that we are social media personas and we work on the internet. Yeah. Lately. You don't have to post. I don't have to post. Lately I have been barely caring to open social media or post at all. I have some news for you. I, I, that's I, a good thing. I don't care to do anything like that. That's lately. okay. That's good. That means you're probably engrossed in having real life. Yeah. Whether good or bad, you're probably like actively dealing with the, the facts and figures of your actual life. Yeah. I don't want to overpromise, but I think, um, you know, those of you who have ever enjoyed that I'm chronically online. Oh yeah. That enjoy that is, it. That time is lasted, over. Yeah. That time is over for yeah. me. I think when I got on drag race, I had my phone on my hand. Like I charge it three times a day. You were good at it, social media, but I was like always on it. My eyes, my screen time was probably 23 hours. Lately. I turn it off and leave it for hours at a time. Yeah. I miss calls all day. Yep. Well, you don't, this whole thing of being perpetually available has really fucked people up. Right. You're lately, not available. Been, Sometimes you're not available. Yeah. And lately, honestly, you know, I've been vulnerable. Yes. And so I've been seeking real life connection. Yes. I need face to face yeah. companionship more than I need fucking the internet at all. Honestly, I need you. And I also need to tell the people about what happened when you came over on Saturday, because, um, <laughs> oh, thought- <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Oh, by the way, I don't, I'm not going to overshare, but I have been in a, a tough spot. She's yeah, having a hard day. So your friend's having a hard day comes over to gab with you. Yeah. She I, come over, I come over with the predication of, Hey, I, I need to come over and cry. And yeah. Probably hang out. Yeah. So she lets me come over. She cooks me a nice or, cup of tea. I said, she cooks come me right tea. away. I got the tea ready. It was, yeah. She said, I'll come get you. And then I said, I'll take an Uber. And she said, okay. But I mean, she should have said, I'll come get you again, but she didn't. <laughs> and I came over, I come up, we have some tea. I cry for, you know, not long, just a good 90 minutes. Reason- and then, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we, I, I I just like, I'm collecting my items. I, I'm like, I should just, where's my keys? I was like, let me get all my stuff in a pile here. I was thinking of migrating to the couch for a yeah. little bit. <laughs> I grab my wallet and she immediately stands up. And goes, are oh, you heading out? <laughs> like she was waiting for me to twitch a muscle for her to go. Oh, you're leaving I already? Basically, oh. I scooped her up. I had the car running. <laughs> it was, it was like, the, I'm not kidding. Like my phone was here. It was like I went, like this is the phone. Yeah. I went, and I like shifted my weight. And she uh-huh. goes, oh, are you going? Yeah. Oh, oh let's you're go. leaving. Oh no, you're leaving. <laughs> Bye. It was. Like, but you were like, oh no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I was like, I'll let you know when I'm fucking leaving your house. You'll know because I'll be gone. The funny thing is, is like I do the. Uh, that's not the opposite. I'll just leave somewhere. You just leave. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, especially at a party. One on one's a little weird. Obviously, you don't do that. The well, Irish goodbye when you one on one. Especially now that I don't drink. Yeah. Now when everyone's turned, I'm like, oh not no. I care if I oh, leave. Oh, goodbye. Get the leave. hell out of there. No way. Yeah, I don't know. That's the best thing about hanging out with drunk people. Yeah. You slip out like a candle in the wind. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did. Rec- I think we talked about this on the last part. Did I tell you that I watched the comeback for the first time? I don't think we talked about it here. I I'd can't never believe seen it. Come back. I, did did I'd never you seen gag? It. Did you gag? I laughed so hard. I loved it. My, it blew my mind. It yeah. blew my the first season blew my mind. The second season, tore me up. Oh yeah, it's actually quite poignant. Tore me up. Mm. Tore me up. And, you know, I've been vulnerable, and some of that <laughs> content was similar to what I was going through, and so it oh, just that's true. Poor. I was exercising watching it, sobbing. I mean, her performance she gives in that is mm. so fucking beautiful. Yeah, it's My crazy. God. It's so funny. Yeah. And layered and crazy. Layered like lasagna. The scene where she wants to go patch things up with her husband and she gets convinced to put on a body mic and he realizes she has a body mic on when she's trying to save the marriage. Mm. Oh! Yeah, crazy. As, uh, Laura Silverman. Jane? Yeah. Jane. 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 Yes. Yeah. Jane. So and- per- pitch perfect as that like... Like, Chili, she, but doesn't want it. Like, wants to do something of substance, but is like stuck in this like weird. Because this is like early in reality TV, and she wants to do something of substance, but you can tell she starts to believe she has to exploit yes. Valerie to get it yeah. a little bit. She has yeah. to push the boundaries. Yeah, and she become it's like she crosses a line frequently. Yeah, the scene, spoiler. The scenes are like Valerie's like, this is my real life. I can't do this right now, and you know she's like. This is your love story. People are going to want to know. Right. Oh, that is that is how producers how talk to yes. you. Yes, they try is. to make you feel like you have the wheel and you don't. You don't. So yeah. like, that was so chilling. I mean, like you when you're. Maybe, so, so go ahead. Maybe think of like Drag Race when you're like mad or whatever, and they'd be like, "Well, the other option is if you let everyone else here tell their side of what happened. Don't you want your voice to be present in that? Like they say things to oh get God. you to participate. When your boundaries come up, they can see it and they go under it or over it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I that stuff doesn't work on me anymore. 
I just wouldn't put myself in those situations. Yeah. You know, like I, but also in reality to perform reality. Well, you have to anchor it in reality. Yes. And because, so yes, you have to, unfortunately there's casualties because mm. you have to at least dig your hooks in mm. to play a fake scene that, that is still somehow real. Yeah. That's why housewives can cry and shit is because yeah, they might've yelled action, but they're playing out a real emotion with a real situation, you know? Yeah. That diabolical, huh? Yeah. Well, because you know, I think because did you already, did you have that thing when you were young where like you had the self-consciousness of a gay person? Of course, everywhere at all you know times. That's, yes. where my hunt, that's where my posture yeah, came yeah, from. Yeah. If you ever see me like oh, this, yeah. it's because in life, yeah. I got Hyper -vigilant. tall early and I was like, Hypervigilant. You know, protection mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's the reality TV thing. Like, there are cameras around, but you're there long enough so you kind of forget them, but you're, they're always there. There's always an awareness of you're being watched and, and surveilled. The cameras become your friends. The camera people are often your friends. They're in the room yeah. for significant moments in your life. Yeah. And so you feel very vulnerable. It doesn't feel like you're being oh, surveilled yeah. anymore. It feels like you have the support of friends. You're being witnessed rather than surveilled. You're, yeah, you're it's being almost weird. supported by them. Their presence supports you instead of makes you feel vulnerable. Oh, right. That, that's like a movie. I mean, they're supporting you. They're making you a star. They're not like, yeah. they're not filming you in a spider hole. But their job is also like, um, you know, their job is to get the truth. And right. they make you feel like you're in on that. But the truth is... It's not the truth. Watching Valerie Cherish, they're they're filming her knowing she's lying, covering right. for herself, making yeah. excuses. That's just flopped. What I know. loved about the the comeback is she's unraveling. Yeah. And she never plays it. She plays it the way an actress would, which is to fight it the whole time. It's crazy. She never yeah. unravels. If you can see in her eyes, she is struggling. Yeah, struggling, yeah, yeah, struggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she never gives up the ghost. Yeah. It's like chilling. It's chilling. And it's so much more effective than if she had just broke and cried or whatever. But like her fighting for her dignity basically the whole time when she was kind of a flop. I mean, they yeah, play absolutely Valerie a flop. Cherish kind of yeah. like, like a, um, not even a has up, been. But she never made it. Right. Like, And she's always like, well, I'm it. That was that, her big thing. But like. Yeah. Yeah. And then I mean, Sad. the second season where she's she the opening. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the oh. opening of the second season, she has to go audition. For a role based on, on her, her that is written to make her look horrible. That's right. For HBO, right? And this, the cold read is like, oh just go God. in there and write jokes about my old pussy. <laughs> oh my God. And she's reading it and it's funny, but you can tell in the moment when yeah. she does the cold read, yeah. you can see her eyes welling and her feelings are hurt. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so fucking she good. Yeah. turned it. I've never seen anything. It beats Watchmen. That's how much it impacted me. I was like, isn't it startling to realize like, because if you know her from Friends... You're like, whatever. And you realize like what an incredible dramatic and comedic actress she is. Well, it's I turned like to, I, insane. Amazing. I turned it's to David insane. and I said, I would love a show like this where Kim is just following me around to get to act like an idiot. And David goes, I, Honey, I goes, yeah, Joey, but they get to talk to the camera and stuff. And David goes, what do you think you do? <laughs> David goes, do you know how much footage we have of you looking right into the camera and talking from last season? I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. The Bald and the Beautiful is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever find that just as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain suddenly won't stop talking? Do your thoughts start racing right before bed or at other inopportune moments? I've definitely been there before, and in those moments, I like to talk to someone I trust and try to make sense of it all. It turns out therapy is a great place to do that, so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. Therapy is a helpful tool for learning how to manage life's challenges and become a better version of yourself. If you've been in a negative headspace, a therapist can be a set of ears to hear you and empower you. Even if you don't think of yourself as the kind of person who needs to see a therapist, you might be surprised by how helpful it can be to talk to a licensed professional. Finding a therapist can be intimidating, but BetterHelp makes it easy to get started and will support you the whole way as you find the right fit for you. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. It's kind of like online dating, but for your brain. Also, it's entirely over the internet and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash bald today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. What else have I been watching? Uh, Dave, David's been watching The Real Housewives in New York. There's all new girls. Oh, uh, Jenna, um, uh, 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 who? Jenna Lyons. Jenna Lyons. I watched her like, um, did you know? That if you spray salt water on a uh, copper, it'll give it a, a patina in 24 hours. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
cool. I will say it's interesting because that's what the, I learned from her video. She's the, wacky, wacky, wacky. Les, Jackie. Oh yes, Les. Or at least queer. I don't. She might like guys. Queer. Too, I don't let's, know. Let's, let's, let's not say Les. Let's not say Les. Okay. You homophobic bitch. She. Well, I know she likes girls. I don't know if she likes boys. I don't know. Well, we. I'm not talking about her sexual preferences. I'm talking about her design proclivities. Oh. <laughs> um. I'm just saying a, she gets brownie points for being queer for me. Of are there queer housewives? This, this is my point. She doesn't have a, a this wife. Is, this is the second I mean, one. She doesn't have a husband or a wife. Why? Yeah. So why is it called housewives still? Because well, it used to be all these women. You know, New York was um, traditionally these older women, very engaged with their sex Garson, lives. Goldberg, oh. Most of them divorced. Okay. Very sexy. Very drinking. Very glam. Yeah, cougars. Yeah, but the reality stars have gotten, I guess, like for whatever reason, they mm. took that entire cast, people who've been there since the beginning. And threw them in the dumpster. The and wood got chipper. All new girls. Well, it, the truth is, you can negotiate yourself house. out of a salary. Okay. At a certain point, I think the network was probably like, you know what? It's going to be chunky, but if we let all these girls go, we can get a new audience invested in the new ones. That's it's the gonna truth. Be chunky. It's going to be clunky and chunky. I like chunky as a as a corporate strategic um like uh, watchword. But at least these women, a lot of them are married because the other ones, I don't think there was a single actually wife left. Well, I think they're probably, uh, um, it's less liability because their husbands are often known to embezzle, steal, murder, and and do other crimes. I wouldn't recommend doing right? anything like that unless your books are really clean. And I'm talking clean books. Like quick, I haven't murdered books. anybody. Turbo tax. I also haven't I've robbed the dead. <laughs> well. How many deads have you robbed today? Well, what is dead? <laughs> exactly. You know, deceased. If the, if it's bones in a box, yeah. What am I so doing? I gather, Stealing from the museum? Bone like, collector. Yeah. Whatever. Thank you. Um, what else we've we been watching? Uh, I I watched something that I um, uh, I watched something. I watched something. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you what it is. It was. I don't remember. Tomb Raider. No, it was like a. It was something good. And I liked it. You maybe watched Dune the other day, part of it. No, just for the sound. Uh huh. Just for the sound. Sound you can feel. Oh, that's what I came to some conclusions about Dune. Tell me. Chunky. You know, a little live? clunky. No, I. I think that Timmy. What were you swept up in? I think I was swept up in the idea of. Um, there was one scene that hooked me, and then I just kept watching it over and over, like a screensaver, uh -huh. almost like that ADHD relief music that uh -huh. I put on. That was sound like a fucking telephone soundtrack. Yes. Like it just became like a rattle, like a soothing balm. The movie you know what i mean oh kind of like a background thing yes exactly you know that's that's how i am with the office but i've watched it enough times now that it, it's starting to lose its flavor i'm that, getting nose blind from it yeah yeah so now i'm like looking at it uh clearly very clearly and i'm like oh that was that scene was overwrought that could have been cut this was kind of boring you know what i mean like this, yeah. this is this story is not that fierce with like, the office now i'm so deep in that i'm basically watching background characters like because i just have everything else has been downloaded yeah. so i'm like oh pam's boobs are huge like i'm noticing so you, physical characteristics yes. of characters the uh, the witches of eastwick i watched for the 27th time maybe and i noticed that when she gets called a slut in the supermarket by three jealous women they're all blonde brunette and redhead oh wow like mirror images of them but yeah. the, like the you know this stuck up like housewifey types i was yeah. like I never noticed that but um that movie is fucking fierce it is it sure it's is so it good. needs a reboot who's in it no that's i thought about that all weekend it can't get a reboot no you know they're gonna they're gonna drag out no, it's, they're gonna drag out zendaya, zendaya yeah dula peep uh, and emma and, roberts yeah and yeah and um, um uh, and ice spice and they're gonna they're gonna drag out the, <laughs> and uh, pitbull is gonna be jack nicholson charlie sheen is gonna be jack nicholson <laughs> no you keep the thing about hollywood is that you can't you don't have a um you don't have a uh, cast of the of stardom of, of equal like no who caliber. will it really be no the, the redhead will be Bryce Dallas Howard no too old that's not true they're not she's not young in the movie they're thirty I'm gonna say they're thirty love the scene where um they're thirty she's directing the band and she oh, yeah. finally is like I, think I want you to put to the music down yeah and we're gonna play the shit out, out of this thing. yeah when I count to four we're gonna play the shit out of this and then she's flying around I do think that's Frizzy hair do you ever take a music class like choir or band well no yes I did. I do think that is a part of music classes that is missing. How You're to let so, go? It's so like Rigid. posture, the notes, yeah. the poise. Yeah. You spend do, hours do, every week do, playing do, music do, do, do. and it never feels free. Right. It never feels These aren't just notes. Like, these are bah, bah, these are bah. musical outcry. Right, yeah. I think that it, it is technique though does go a long way. Well, <laughs> You have to know how what notes to play in order to play them yes, freely. Of course. Of <laughs> yeah. course. I mean, you really have to know it in and out. So but who would play her? So 35 to 40, we're going to say that's the age range of the women in I that like movie. I like Bryce Dallas Howard for the redhead. Okay, fine. 
The Bryce Share Bryce again. De- um, <laughs> share again. <laughs> or maybe it's Les this time and the devil's a well, woman. Well, they tried to. And the three are men. Mm, not men, because that's the mask. Men would never get into that. Uh, they would never They would never cross three dongs, crossing the streams. Is it implied that they're eating each other's pussies and everything? It's implied that they're all having sex together. It's not implied. It's demonstrated. Okay, wow. Do you know they, they, um, there's a scene at the end where they're all in lingerie in the bed waiting for him? Yeah. They all fuck. They fuck in. Yeah. So the the man is played by, who would replace Jack Nicholson? Who is that person today? Because Jack Nicholson's still around. Ewan McGregor. No, no. He's too old. Okay. Timothy Chalamet. I would kill myself. I know. Timmy's, the Willy Wonka trailer, have you seen it? Tell yeah. me you've seen it. Yeah. I'm making chocolate, of course. Girl. That's Alyssa Edwards. Girl. That's Alyssa <laughs> Edwards as Timothy Chalamet That's as Willy Melissa Wonka. Edwards. I'm making chocolate, of course. Yeah. That movie looks like, I don't I don't like it when there's an outcry for like, oh, cancel culture. I wish that movie would get canceled before its release because we do not need to see that. Just let, can we just let Gene Wilder live? Willy Wonka. Yeah. Well, wait, it's it's not based on the book or the movie. It looks like it's a prequel, huh? It looks like it it, it looks like a big nasty turd on, on a Well, he piece learned to sh- make chocolate somewhere. I'm making chocolate, of course. I'm making chocolate, of course. I'm making uh, chocolate, of course. <laughs> and also, he went so mid in his like his uh, Gene Wilder's a genius in that movie. Uh-huh. Like an unhinged genius with a range that's so like expansive. Amazing. And he's like, "Well, I guess we're going to go over here now." <gasps> it's like so crazy, goofy, stupid, but only mid. It's like, I'm making chocolate, of course. It's, yeah. I hate it so much. It doesn't matter. It's so it corny. It's so it corny. Matter. Everything. Hugh every, Grant as an Oompa Loompa? Yeah. Well. Get the check. Where's your dignity? Well, Where's your dignity? Oompa Loompas in the first film were little people, obviously. Yeah. In the second one, I don't remember if that actor was little. But and Hugh in the Grant third one, little. we don't need to do any guesswork because there just shouldn't be a third iteration of that film. Yeah. It's not gonna, why are they going to make it a franchise? Because they're making chocolate, of course. They're making chocolate, of course. <laughs> oh, oh, and musical God. numbers. I hate, yeah. All CGI. Yeah. All from t- like 22-year-old interns chained to desks for like 95 hours a week. Yeah, people in those like green screen suits with ping pong balls all over them. And then they just put their face on yeah. at the end. They like have Maggie Smith go up, like fly her like private jet for four hours to do a bunch of the lines and then that's it. It's crazy. Why do you think AI is so obsessed with human expressions of grimace or like laughter whenever you put humans into ai it's always like i don't i don't know i've never put i've never used the ai david silver gets a little high and uses the ai and likes to see what comes out i mean i'm always interested in what comes out but it depends on what like the the david engine put in is. like gay pink and purple kissing batman gay and what came out was one of the batman had big boobs <laughs> so because oh the, the, the ai doesn't know the ai is just how about that that seems close enough, right? And you're like, you know what I mean? You're like, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> hold up. Remix. <laughs> okay, bye. Wait, 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 wait. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, my God. AI? We're so good at ending podcasts. I, we got to do it better than that. We don't do good intros, we and do, we don't not, do good outros. No, there's no intro. There's no outro, so I'm going to do it. So as we wrap up, listeners, thank you so much. We, all, we, of course, want to thank you so much for listening, but we also want you to know that Trixie is having her 34th birthday in just a couple of days. It will already have happened once this has aired. But she wants you to know, and I want you to know that she's still here at 34. 34. 34. Uh, somebody called it Dirty Whore. That's what that, <laughs> that's what that age is. 34, Dirty Whore. 40, Wonderful. Anything one is wonderful. 30, Wonderful. Dirty Whore. Dirty Whore. That's, I love that. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Well, 34, you dirty whore. Come back next week for more. What is like, oh, what age are you turning? And it's like Dirty Whore. Dirty you whore. don't even say 34. You wait for them to figure it out. Can you say 44, Dirty? No. No, it has to rhyme. That's the thing about rhyming. They have to sound the same. Homonyms. Homonyms. That sounds the same, but spelled the differently. The color red. I read a book. Homonyms. Homophone. Oh shit! I'm I'm wrong. Thank you. It is homophone. Thank you very What's much. What's homonyms? Nothing. Homonym is no. It looks the same, but it sounds differently. I think you're right. I know I'm right. All no, right. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure. So you I'm had to right. keep me on the pod just long enough to be right, and now you want <laughs> to end it. Correct. <laughs> now you have. Now that you seem smart, you're like. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we can end it. <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> Fuck you, Scott. <laughs> Fuck Scott. you, Scott. <laughs> Bye. Scott. Scott, um, we're Scott. done with the pod now. You can come Scott. plug my hole. <laughs> Scott, bring the machine in, Scott. <laughs> Hook that jelly dildo up to the fax machine and let me have it, the Scott. The kicker is Scott's a sound guy. You know what I mean? The I whole know, time. I know, I know. Sorry, Scott. Sorry, Goodbye. Scott. Bye. Bye.